Hey folks, I'm Travis Vigil with Dell Technologies and you have joined me for yet another episode of Talking Tech with Travis, where we'll stop at nothing. We have an awesome topic today, AI and the future of Power Edge servers. Now, those of you who know me know that I love to run and you also know that I like to start these episodes by finding parallels between my work at Dell and my passion for running. This one's easy. Sometimes when running a new innovation comes up so quickly and provides so much value, you just have to jump on it. And that's the case with today's topic, especially AI. Now our special guest today is Dave Lincoln, Vice President of Product Management, Compute Systems, who's gonna to talk to us about all the innovations in the latest generation of PowerEdge servers and generative AI. So let's go ahead and get started. Dave, welcome to the show. Uh, thanks, Travis. Awesome. So let's start at the beginning. What are the key features and innovations from the latest generation of PowerEdge servers that you think are going to interest our customers the most? Uh, yeah, well, gosh, there's just so many to, to choose from. Um, as you know, Trav, this is, the, uh, this is the biggest server launch in Dell's history uh, by far. Uh, we, we launched more than two dozen next generation servers across rack, tower, uh, and dense form factors. All these platforms optimize for what matters for our customers, whether they're uh, deploying in their core or growth areas, uh, in their data centers, at their edge, or in a scale fashion. All of these systems, all of these platforms are really, um, have been designed and delivered with uh, customer workloads in mind, including data analytics, AI, HPC, and virtualization workloads to name uh, just a few. This portfolio is our most AI-enabled portfolio in history. Well, now, Dave, that's a that's a bold statement, and you, like me, have been talking a lot recently and listening a lot recently about this concept called generative AI. Um, I know that was forefront of our, uh, in our mind as we were bringing this uh, this portfolio to market as we were launching this portfolio. Talk to to me a little bit about generative AI and how it uh, how it dovetails into what we're doing here with Power Edge. Yeah, uh, folks, uh, you know, folks have known about AI for a long, long, long time. Um, you know, if you think about traditional AI, you know, you have, um, you know, intelligence models that are really analyzing, you know, billions, you know, giant data sets um, and really kind of helping with analysis, kind of big data analysis or maybe classification. But uh, Gen AI is really, uh, it refers to the type of AI that's actually creating new content, uh, whether we're, uh, you know, Folks are creating new music, um, for instance, um, that just came to my work. Uh, here's one. I just I was in uh, at our headquarters in Round Rock, Texas last month. I was in a lab with a number of colleagues. We had built our own model uh, internally. And, um, you know, the colleague, uh, he happened to go to Texas A&M. Uh, Kyle Field is the football stadium. And just on the fly, uh, he typed, uh, you know, put Kyle Field in a rainforest jungle and voila. So um, anyway, it's, it's it's pretty. It was pretty. It was pretty wild to see uh, in person. But um, in any case, folks, uh, Gen AI has really gotten propelled and accelerated with uh, you know the breakthrough model Chat GPT, um, where the world really has been exposed to all the possibilities of of AI. Uh, Nvidia CEO referred to it as quote the iPhone moment for. AI, uh, but of course, to run all these complex machine models, you need heavy duty uh, compute infrastructure to handle workloads such as this. Um, but in any case, customers, um, you know, you have, have the ability to, 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 to drive even greater insights using their own proprietary data, uh, developing Gen AI models based on their own data sets so that they can, you know, grow their businesses faster, differentiate themselves, um, and you know, do that and you know, have faster access to insights where the data is actually generated, uh, be it on premises or in customers' um, edge edge environments. So deploying Gen AI to to create things such as digital assistants, perhaps developers with code generation, um, healthcare customers or research science customers, uh, you know, driving breakthroughs in in medicine, um, you know, uh, you know, cancer diagnosis, that sort of thing. So 
it kind of runs uh, it kind of runs the gamut. But that's that's kind of how I think about Gen AI, Travis. And Dave, I mean, it really is exciting. You call it the 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 uh, the iPhone moment. Um, it, it, the the benefits that this technology can bring in terms of better interactions with customers, in terms of faster coding, in terms of being able to give you know uh, diagnose root cause of you know a complex IT issue or uh, you know a complex issue in general general based on training these models on the right data set is just truly mind boggling and um, you know this comes with a need for a lot of compute power and um, that was that was top of mind again as we brought this portfolio to market. So so how do the latest generation Power Edge servers accommodate generative AI specifically? Uh, you know, there's two ways. Um, you can think about it uh, as just servers as a standalone solution, or uh, if uh, an alternative model would be via a collaboration, a recently announced um, collaboration between Dell and NVIDIA that uh, we've coined Project uh, Helix. Um, but back to, you know, I, I talked hey, about- Hey, Dave, uh, did, did I tell you something about Power Project Helix? You know, you know where that, that project code name came from? I have no clue. I had a, a, a generative AI service uh, suggest uh, a list of, of, uh, of code names for a generative AI, AI initiative. Uh, well, I like it. I, um, I, I tried to throw in a hopper of our, our code name Q uh, Project Vortex, but um, that got shot down, unfortunately. <laughs> but, uh, it's an inside joke, folks. Um, but in any case, um, so yes, uh, good to know. Um, so uh, where was I? Uh, Jenna, yes, it takes a lot of horsepower. Uh, and so one of, uh, you know, one of our recent platforms uh, that we announced as part of the uh, Acceleration portfolio uh, is the XC9680. And holy smokes, talking about horsepower, nearly 250 pounds, uh, this thing is. This is you know, breakthrough uh, innovation, uh, you know, invention that the world has never seen, frankly. Um, what, what the XC9680 does, it combines the, the latest uh, technology from NVIDIA, the 8.8 eight GPUs. These GPUs work in tandem with the server CPU to deliver uh, faster processing speed, improve, improve performance, uh, and and the like. Uh, it can do things such as maybe instant translation um, to multiple language during uh, a Zoom meeting. Uh, I talked about cancer diagnosis, fraud detection. These are just a few few of these um, you know sorts of deployments uh, you know usages that customers could expect. Um, but there's more um, of uh, of the four platforms I just named our flagship. Uh, but two four way GPU platforms. That's XE eighty six forty and XE ninety six forty. Whether customers have uh, prefer air-cooled or liquid-cooled uh, data center technology, uh, these these platforms are perhaps a little bit more ideal for, say, HPC simulation modeling. Um, this would be cases where uh, GPU uh, per performance per watt is particularly uh, important. And then uh, rounding out the four platforms that are part of this announcement, uh, not leastly, is our PCI GPU-enabled uh, uh, platform. And that's the R760 uh, XA. Um, this uh, this little guy uh, packs quite a punch into just a 2U server form factor, uh, replete with dense GPUs, offering support for things such as maybe AI training, inferencing, uh, virtual desktops, uh, performance graphics, um, that sort of thing. So those are that would be uh, Travis. That would be kind of like a you know a standalone server solutions. Um, back to um, uh, Project Helix, which you coined. Uh, so, as I was saying, um, you know, collaborative uh, initiative between us and, uh, and NVIDIA. I like to think of it as Gen AI in, in a box. It's a, uh, it's a blueprint for our customers that really maps out the entire uh, generative AI uh, lifecycle, uh, providing uh, a full stack solution, all the technical expertise uh, and pre built tools that customers need uh, to leverage their uh, proprietary data in an effective, um, you know, responsible, efficient, and, and accurate uh, manner. So um, I think that's that's really kind of the uh, the essence of of, uh, of Helix Travis. Of course, it includes NVIDIA, uh, you know, uh, you know, breakthrough technology such as um, uh, their enterprise software, uh, 
hundreds of frameworks, pre-trained models, dev tools, uh, everything that's needed, as I said, for uh, you know, Gen AI in, in a box. So um, all of these uh, Dell's validated designs based on Project Helix uh, will be available starting uh, July of next, July 2023. So, so Dave, you talked about the eight ways, you talked about the four ways, you talked about air cooling, you talked about uh, direct cooling, you talked about GPUs as PCI adding cards into, in our, uh, into our R series products. You talked about the validated designs with, with Project Helix. All of those are, are pretty beefy systems and all of those um, you know, sound like they're gonna keep the data center pretty warm. And you know more than anybody that our customers are facing challenges with power and cooling capabilities. You mentioned it a little bit up front, but talk to us a little more about power edge cooling advancements and how that links to sustainability. Yeah, indeed. Uh, not a customer conversation goes by where, where this isn't top of mind for our customers. So we put specific focus on, uh, on power and cooling uh, innovations. Our advanced cooling technologies you know, maintain optimal temperatures, e even in these you know, very rigorous, um, high performance, high density environments. Uh, of course, not only does that guarantee, uh, you know, reliable performance, but also, you know, prolongs uh, the lifespan of, of the service. But whether it's, you know, innate uh, platform design or whether it's our software uh, tools that help also manage such as uh, Power Manager, uh, which helps with uh, visibility and control of power consumption and, and uh, a user's, uh, user's utilization of their environment. Uh, all, all of that, by the way, an extension of uh, our open managed enterprise offer. But, um, you know, as I say, this is top of mind. So, you know, talking a little bit more about platform innovation, you know, we have specific, um, you know, kind of uh, customized airflow, you know, really given a lot of thought to airflow design uh, with, uh, you know, new innovative board layout that, uh, it, you know, optimizes, you know, the fans, heat sink, uh, uh, you know, these sort of things. We actually have uh, you know, something we call multi-vector cooling 3.0 for next level fan controls that optimizes um, cooling. Uh, it, it allows us to, to support far more air-cooled configurations running at full throttle 100% uh, of the time in zero throttling. Um, you know, so much so uh, these smart flow configurations that increase airflow, it actually reduces fan power by 52% relative to our prior generation of uh, wow. servers within uh, 15U. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's meaningful, um, for those customers that, uh, perhaps are looking for more for direct liquid cooling capability. We've expanded that we've added 12 next gen platforms along those lines, four socket, one socket, our modular compute sled, and then, uh, in our two, you, uh, dense four way GPU solution. So it's, uh, it's top of mind, as you'd expect Dell, our commitment to, uh, sustainability, um, you know, it would be it, um, you know, uh, committing to having, you know, more than uh, half of our content, uh, be it uh, sourced by recycled or renewable materials by uh, 2030. Uh, but uh, at the end of the day, you know, we're trying to do what's right for the world, reducing the server's uh, carbon footprint uh, based on highly efficient uh, power supplies and using more recyclable uh, material, reducing weight, promote, reducing waste from promoting sustainability. Dave, thank you so much for all of that information. Thank you so much for joining me here today. This has been a fantastic discussion. Sustainability, generative AI, new 16th generation Power Edge launch. It's been a great, great uh, pleasure to have you here with me. And thanks to everyone for joining us for the season one finale of Talking Tech with Travis. And thanks again for your interest in Dell, where we'll stop at nothing. <laughs>